I was raised Catholic, and for years I hated going to Mass. So in my, my family, the rule was you had to go to Mass no matter what, every single Sunday, every holy day, unless you were too sick to do anything else the rest of the day. And I hated going to Mass so much that I, as often as I could, pretended to be sick to get out of going to Mass. I hated Mass so much until one time I was 16 years old, and I came across this teaching, and it changed my life. I remember almost out loud going, wait, it's true? Like, that's really him? And I ran downstairs, and my siblings, my parents, whatever, were in the kitchen. I'm like, you guys, you know like the Mass, like the Eucharist? They're like, yeah. Like, that's really Jesus. And they're like, yeah, we know. Like, no, 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 it's like really Jesus. That's actually him. And I remember going for a Holy Communion. It was like, I was just like, oh, I'm just so excited. This is like really, it's really him. And I remember being so underwhelmed by the reality of God made flesh. I would go to adoration. We're going to have in a few moments. Like, I would go to adoration and kneel like, I'd be kneeling down like, okay, go. I'm ready. Whenever you're ready, just go. Come on. And nothing. And I remember at first being kind of really disappointed. And I'm like, gosh, what the heck, Lord? And then just realizing, wait a second, if you were to see Jesus 2,000 years ago, would he obviously look like God? No. Would he be fully God? Absolutely. Fully God, fully man, but God hidden. The glory of God hidden. Why would he do that? And why does he do that? My guess is this. The whole point of the incarnation was to get close to us. You know, if we, if we saw God for who he really is, man, I would not, I would, I wouldn't approach him. I would never walk into a Catholic church if, if God was unveiled. And so what does he do? He hides and he just waits. He is so in love with you that he's willing to become so small you're, you'll ignore him. He is so in love with you that he's willing to hide that glory and let you just forget him. What happens when we offer up the sacrifice on the altar? The moment in the mass when the priest is here at the altar, and he says, this is my body given up for you, and then he elevates the host. The worship isn't offered at that moment. The worship is offered when the priest takes the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, and he says, through him, with him, in him. That's the moment when the Father is glorified. The two things that happen every single time we go to Mass. Everyone in this church, you know exactly what those two things are. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. So the priest says, okay, in a second, the Father will be glorified and the world will be saved. So pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. The church has been telling us every single time we've been going to Mass, stop wasting your priesthood by just watching this. No wonder the Mass is boring. I just up and watch when I should be worshiping. And when you do that, what happens? Two things. The Father is glorified and the world is saved. That can only happen if we stop watching and start worshiping. Because the key, of course, in the end, the end of it is, is Him. Everything we do is for Him. We love our neighbor for Him. We take care of the outcast for Him. We don't neglect the stranger and the people who are forgotten for Him. And we come here day after day because He's worth it. For He loves us so much that He's willing to be walked upon. He loves us enough to become so small we'll ignore Him. He's reckless, not with you, not with your heart, with Himself. Uh, when I was in college, this, this place they had, they had actually had unleavened bread. But what happened is like they gather around the altar and they would like rip off a, a, a piece of the precious bo sacred body. But what would happen is then on the floor all over to be crumbs of the Eucharist. So I remember it being a college student and there was a guy who after mass, he would go around and he'd pick up, pick up the crumbs and eat the Eucharist off the ground. And at one point I'm like, why do you do that? And he said, I'll tell you why I do that. When he was in high school, he heard the story about when communism came to power in China. What happened was one of the things they needed to do is they needed to shut down religion. And they, one of the things they wanted to shut down was the Christian religion, Catholicism. And so they came into this one town and uh, they ransacked the church, destroyed everything. They took the priest and they locked him in the rectory house next door. All he could do was just watch. And at one point they took the tabernacle and they threw it out the window and it hit the ground in front of him and it just burst open and the, and the hosts were on the ground. And all he could do, because he's under house arrest, all he could do was just, was just stand there and pray and adore Jesus on the ground. This here's a God. He's willing to love us enough to be thrown out of a window and lay there on the ground in the dirt. And that's all he could do is just pray and adore his God. And as night fell, as it got darker, he saw this sh small shadow. And as it got closer, he recognized the shadow was a little 12-year-old uh, girl from his parish. And so she waited until it was dark, and she got closer. And, and when the guards couldn't see her, she snuck up there, and she knelt down. And she was a kid, and she was told not to touch the Eucharist with her hands. And so she just bent her face to the ground. And with her tongue, she picked up one host. Again, as a kid, she was taught you only receive communion one time a day. So she just <laughs> received once, made the sign of the cross, got up. He ran into the night, and night after night, the priest would stand there. And he'd pray that she'd be safe. 
As night after night she came by, knelt down and received Jesus. The priest knew how many hosts there were, so he was so relieved that night. This is the last night, and then she'll be safe. She got there, she knelt down, and she received communion on the tongue. And this time when she got up, she knocked something over, and the guards came running. They saw what she was doing, and immediately they took the butts of the rifles and beat this 12-year-old girl to death after she had received the Eucharist for the last time in her life. And this guy looked at me and he said, do you want to know why I do that? Because of her, because of him. Because this is our God. We can walk away from, because I don't feel anything. I just stop going to mass because like I don't get anything. Or he's a God who loves us so much that he lets us throw him to the ground. Or he's a God who loves us so much that he becomes so small we can ignore him. Or he's a God who loves us so recklessly that he's willing to let us ignore him. My prayer is tonight that none of us ever, ever have a heart that's willing to ignore him because he's too small. That none of us ever have a heart that is willing to walk upon him because he's become bread and wine for us. My prayer is none of us ever skip mass because it's like, well, I don't get anything. And my big prayer is from this, from this night until the evening we step into his presence. We never go to another mass and just watch. We never again waste our priesthood for a single moment, but from this moment until the moment we see the face and the heart of this God who loves us so recklessly that we come here not to watch, but to worship.